Have you been trying punch needle and you can't seem to get it to work? Then this video is for you. I'm going to go over all the common mistakes beginners make when starting with punch needle. There are a few things that you really have to do in order for it to work. So let me help you. The first mistake is not stretching out your fabric properly. For this example, I'm going to use a embroidery hoop and some monk's cloth. So I'm here just preparing it very simply without making a lot of fuss. So I'm closing my closure over there, stretching it out just a little bit and it seems all right. So I'm going to start punching. As you can see, it's quite loose. And while I'm punching, it's not very comfortable because the cloth is moving. And as a result, on the back, the loops will not be even. Another thing that can happen quite quickly is that it will just come loose all the way, which will be very annoying. So how do you fix this mistake? Prepare your hoop properly. Put the cloth in the ring and close it a little bit at the top. Then go all around and stretch it on all sides. Use a screwdriver or pliers to close the closure better. Don't just do it with your hands. And once again, stretch it out on all sides and make sure it's really closed and tight as a drum. That will be much more comfortable when you're punching and your loops will also get even. One of the great things about punch needle is that you work straight from the ball, which makes life a little bit easier. But there's one thing that you really have to pay attention to when working from this ball, and that is that your yarn has to have slack. So what happens when you don't unwind your ball of yarn? So you start punching, I'm just stitching along, and then at some point, right here, this is on tension. There is no slack. And I continue. And what happens, instead of making stitches, I'm pulling out stitches. Which you can see right here. So if I continue, it will just keep on going like this. I need the ball to feed me yarn to make these stitches because on the back I'm making this loop and there is no yarn to make a stitch and that's why it's not working. So what you need to do while punching at all times make sure that you have unwound a bit of yarn something like this put the ball here and pay attention to this. So let me just take it out a bit and just continue and this is just feeding me new yarn at all times and I can just easily continue and once this is gone just unwind some more and pay attention to it but what happens sometimes is when you're not paying attention and you're you've, you've done the slack thing all the yarn is right there and then at one point you start leaning on it and then the exact same thing happens again this is on tension and you start pulling out stitches so one other thing that can happen is that there is somewhere a knot in your yarn. In a lot of balls, in most balls of yarn, at some point, two ends have been joined together by a knot. This is very normal and happens all the time. So you don't notice on beforehand, you've unwound your yarn and you're punching. And then this knot is approaching and when you're not paying attention, which happens, it's not a problem. The nut goes inside and at some point you will feel it. You cannot continue and something is happening. The stitches are not staying in. What is happening? I've got slack, everything is all right. And then you will probably know there is something inside clogging your needle. Whether it's a knot, whether some of the yarn might be more chunky. So what you do is pull out your needle out some stitches if you have to and there it is this is the problem so pull out some more put your needle inside take out a pair of scissors cut it where the knot is cut off the knot and just continue 
like that until you run out of yarn. So now it's gone. You can thread the needle again and just continue where you left off. For the best result, punching needs to be done neatly and precise. And for that you have to follow some rules. So for example, one rule is that you have to make sure that you don't pull up your needle too far. If you go off like this and then push it back in and do something like this, you will see that the stitches will start sticking out instead of lying neatly flat on top of the fabric. So what you do is you pull it up and keep touching the fabric basically, move it forward and then push it down. And that's the same for every stitch. If you pull it up too far, your stitches will start looking differently. So one other thing to pay attention to is that you have to move your needle, push your needle in all the way until the handle touches the fabric at all times with all the stitches that you make. That way you get even stitches looking the same on the back side. So if I do for example this, I'm not going all the way down. I'm not sure if my stitches are going to be long enough. So on the back you've got some really tiny stitches here and these can pop out any minute. These are okay. These look pretty scary. Punching is basically like painting with yarn. You can go in all directions and just fill up areas with your yarn. It's really great. But to do so, you have to make sure that you rotate your needle in the direction that you are punching in. So what happens if I don't follow the rule of turning my needle? Then I will go this way and that way and that way. And I'm sure the stitches are not going to love this. So I'm, as you can see, it looks very different from the flat stitches here as to how they look here. It's very messy. So if you look at the yarn, it's coming out on this side, on the back side where the hole is. And on the other side, it looks like this. So this is going to be the front and that's the side that your stitch is facing. So I make sure that the yarn, the stitch is always formed behind the needle like that. So that is where the yarn pulls out. You go back in and behind your direction, the stitches forms. So when I turn it a little bit, I can go this way, I can go that way, that way, that way. But I always keep on turning it. So one very common mistake is the type of fabric that you're supposed to use. A lot of people start out thinking that you can punch needle in any fabric, like in your clothes and stuff, but that's not possible. So for example, here I have this linen fabric. It's quite dense, you can't really see any holes or anything, and you just think, okay, I'll take my punch needle and I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm just going to try to punch in, but it doesn't work, I can't even push my needle in, I'm using a lot of force here. And if I really try, okay, then what I've done is I've ruined the fabric, I've made a massive hole. It is possible sometimes to use a smaller needle and some smaller yarns, then maybe it might work. Let's see how that goes, so I push it in. Well, because the needle is smaller, it does seem to work with this fabric. So that's very particular to smaller yarn. So 
As a beginner, it's important to work with the right fabric, especially since you haven't had a lot of experience, then I would really recommend using monk's cloth or Panama cotton, which is this one that I have right here. But with this fabric, you have different counts. So for example, this one is seven and a half count. So as you can see, there is a big difference to this one. This one is, I think, about 18 count. And as you can see, the holes are much bigger. For example, if I take the thinner yarn, it does seem to work. It is so subtle. You, can, you just slide in so easily, which is very comfortable. But it also feels like these stitches are just going to come out like too easy. They are not being grabbed really by the threads of the fabric. It would work with a thicker yarn. Which is very comfortable to punch with. And this is still quite fragile. So that's why I wouldn't recommend this to beginners. But it is possible to punch with this one but the best one i think is this one or there's also another type of monk's cloth which has these stripes on it and um, i talk a lot about fabrics in the video that i have linked above here and there i take you through uh, burlap for example some other linens cheese cloth if you want to know more on this topic i really recommend watching that video but this fabric it's a bit harder to push in, but you know you are certain they are really being grabbed by the fabric, by the threads, the warp and the weft in this fabric. And that's what you want. Then you know it's going to stay in place and it's secure. And this is also suitable. That's so great about this fabric. It's also suitable for the very small yarns so it's comfortable to punch i really i love punching with this needle because it's small and that's why it's so super easy and comfortable to work with and you know these are going to stay in and they are very even as well and they are going to stay in place so i really recommend this fabric and uh, you can get it in my shop if you like and it's really great for beginners and it's very versatile it doesn't have the stripes so you can leave negative space you can work with thin yarns and thick yarns in one piece and i really love that so that's about all i am going to say about fabrics today but if you want to know more as i said watch the other video. Another crucial part for punch needle to work is getting the right yarn weight for your punch needle. So for example, for this needle, I've put quite a thin needle in my small laver punch needle, and this would be considered a fine yarn. And this is too thick. So what you can see, I really have to pull for the yarn to go through. It doesn't slide through easily. So I'm just going to try punching with this one and see what happens. I'm just taking my yarn with me all the way. And that's because, like I said in my first tip with the yarn having slack, I need my yarn to flow through the needle and feed me yarn so that I can produce this loop I have in the back but if my yarn is too thick then it won't slide it's just stuck in there so I want to make a pile right here when I take my needle up and go to the next one it just pulls out the loop I made because it's not going through the needle so yarn that is too thick for your punch needle won't work in any circumstances so what if the yarn is too thin? Well, it will slide through very easily, but it will also fall out very easily. So it does seem to work. I create even loops on the back, as you can see. 
I do feel on the other side that it's going up too much even though I'm trying to not move up my needle too much and that is because it is feeding me too much yarn if that makes sense so that's why this is not suitable because this is going to be too fragile as you can see this is not working loops if I'm scratch over it I'm just going to take out this loop and then it's not going to work so that's why you need the yarn to fit nicely here I have chunky yarn with my five and a half millimeter needle and that works perfectly and here I've got fine yarn really fine yarn with the laver punch needle the small laver punch needle so that works I've noticed that the subject of yarn weight can be quite complicated and especially which yarn weight suits which laver needle I have a lot of different size laver needles in my shop so I've decided to make a whole video about just this subject and hopefully then I can make it more clear for you guys um, it won't come this year but probably by the beginning of next year so if you don't want to miss that video make sure to subscribe and see you next time bye